Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got the shop kind of t tidied up after a study in chaos. If you ignore the steam engine drawings and the stuff on the mill and that pile of stuff down there. But good enough, and I think it's about time to get started on a new project. So the old hazard fraught joke coupons made its way into my feet again like it does every couple years, and it's always good for a sensible chuckle. But I was looking through this time, and there's actually some stuff in here that might be kind of fun to make, like a 16-ton hydraulic nail unbender, or a manual chainsaw. But what really caught my eye was the heavy-duty pneumatic slide whistle. Could that actually be made? I think I'm going to try and find out. So I ordered these off Amazon just to uh, see what other ones are, what the construction is like. And I've got to say, these really suck. Um, and it wasn't like I was just ordering the cheapest of the cheap. This is basically all there was. So I don't know if my aesthetics are just more highly developed or I, I'm misremembering childhood some, but I don't know. I used to have one of these, but it was red and I don't remember it sucking this much. But anyway, I think these can be improved on. So I want to make it out of this one inch cold roll tube that I happen to have with uh, fairly thick 3 16 inch walls. So I think that'll be enough to work with. Um, looking at how sort of the standard con standard design is made, um, I can't replicate this cut very easily in metal. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do is, is make that beveled cut and then I'll have another sleeve that comes over on top of here um, so I can get that that aperture the way it is. And then there's this plug that goes in there. And from what I was reading, that's the important part is that all the air is channeled in up at the top so that it's just blowing over right at this edge that's cut in. So that's what I'm going to try and replicate um, as the first experiment. This is how I have it set up in the mill. It's just in my normal mill vise. I have a V-block there um, to give the extra the grip on our round piece. And then I have this 25 degree angle block, which I used um, to set the, the angle that it's at. And 25 degrees seems to be more or less what the wood one was. So I'm just going to follow that for now. So now I just need to mill off a bit of this. Woo, that went really easily. This is my first time playing with one of those corn cob style roughing cutters. Um, and yeah, they work a treat. I, I need to get more of these, I think. So uh, let's look at this. So yeah, that's, that's not bad at all for a couple minutes on the mill. Um, looks not bad. And so the walls are 3 16th, so together they are 6 16th, AKA 3 8 so the gap inside is 5 8 I don't have any 5 8 um, rod on hand that I could find, but I do have this one, which is 9 16th, which is pretty close. And check this out. So yeah, that's looking promising. Um, it wasn't super easy. I was having to adjust the exact angle of attack and embrosure and all that stuff quite a bit. So trying to do that with air off an air compressor will, might be a bit tricky, but looking promising. The next step is still to make a sleeve that can fit on here to get that little uh, sliver cut out to help direct the air. So onto that. Okay, it's another day here and I've just been continuing to play around a bit with this pipe I made. You saw me make previously. Uh, I've been using some compressed air to try and recreate the effects I can get um, blowing on it manually. And I wasn't able, I wasn't getting any particularly reliable effects coming straight onto this split. Um, but I did happen to notice if I angle it right here into the middle of the, the wall of the pipe, I can actually get some pretty reliable good tones. Except, of course, when I try and do it on demand. Yeah, 
Yeah, there it is. It's fiddly. Um, I gotta get the angle just right, but it's reliable enough. I'm sure I could machine up something that would make it happen. So I've been playing around with that. First thing to note is it doesn't happen unless I'm plugging up the bottom. Um, and with my pinky shoved in there to make the chamber a little bit shorter. The other interesting thing I noticed is that <laughs> this is actually independent of the cut I did. It'll ha work on this side too, again, as long as I plug up the chamber. There. Yeah, same thing. So I think this is just, it works because this is a high enough pressure jet of air that when it hits that, it actually, you know, spreads out in every direction and you get the laminar flow over the top of this cavity, uh, which is what's doing it in the first place. Um, and so I guess you only need something like this if, you're, if you have puny little human lungs trying to do the same effect. So I'm thinking that for what I want to make, this is probably good enough. I still might try and make the, uh, the flat and wide um, aperture to try and play something like this and see what that looks like. I've also seen some other pipe organ designs that might be fun to play with. But one of the other things this led me to discover is, so I cut a section of that, that rod, which fits in here, but sloppily, there's like a sixteenth of an inch free. And with this in here, I can't make it happen, not really. So that's good to know. Not only is this, do I need a, a sliding piston in there, but the seal needs to actually be pretty tight. So when I actually make the real piston, maybe I'll put some uh, leather gaskets on it or something to, to keep that airtight seal better than just a, uh, you know, a brass on steel uh, interface would be. So yeah, this is, this is interesting stuff. Okay. I think I've decided on a path forward. Um, this blow, air blow gun I have, just one of the ones I keep on the wall, um, hooked up, uh, has this nozzle that unthreads. And as far as I can tell, this is a 1 8 inch NPS, so straight pipe thread, which is 27 threads per inch. Um, so I should be able to make a replacement for this that gives me the wider effects that I'm looking for. And that seems like kind of the easiest way to to prototype farther is then I can play with a couple different apertures here and then just just keep doing it manually. Now there's a bit of a complication in that I don't have the gears to cut 27 threads per inch on my lathe so I'm gonna have to get a die I think and that's a bit unfortunate but um, I still think this is probably the best path forward. So the the die for this 1 8 inch NPS thread um, hasn't arrived yet. I thought I could pick it up in town at this amazing hardware store called Hardwick's, um, but unfortunately they didn't have one. Uh, they did have some British pipe thread uh, dies though, so, you know, luck of the draw. So this, the die for that won't arrive until tomorrow, Sunday, and obviously I want to get work done today, Saturday. Um, being a prime working day. So I think instead I'm going to forget about this for now and now and then start thinking about how the the piston basically in here will work. Um, I can turn this down to make a piston that fits in there and I think at first I'm not going to try the leather gasket thing. I'm going to see if I can just get a good enough sliding fit um, see if that works. It'll be a lot easier I think. Uh, and that can be mounted on a little, I don't know, eighth inch rod or something like that. But in order for it not to jam, I need a cap on top here with a hole through it that the rod, the piston rod can slide through and that'll keep everything nice and parallel. So what I'm going to try and do is first, I'm going to cut another section of this pipe because this can just be a test piece for now. And I can resolve what this end's going to look like later on the real one and just focus on the, the far end from now. So this cap, um, probably have to screw on, I'm thinking. Uh, so cut a thread on this end of the pipe and then turn this into a cap with an internal thread that matches that. Now this is one inch, so even if I had some taps and dies in that size, the thread pitch would be way too big. So I'm gonna to have to do some, some custom one inch, I don't know, 20 TPI. I'll, I'll see what the gears on my lathe are currently set up for and, and choose from there, but it'll be a fairly fine pitch for something so big. Uh, doing this side will be 
pretty easy because it's external threading. This side will be unpleasant because it'll be internal single point threading, which is always pucker inducing, turning right up to a shoulder. I can, I'll cut a relief in there, of course. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do the the trick where you're running backwards and you're cutting on the far side, so you're moving out when you cut the thread. Uh, frankly, I've had bad results with that in the past. Uh, I might just be a conceptualization problem on my part, but I think using the DRO and if I cut a wide enough shoulder in here, it'll be fine. And then I'll just make sure to cut an extra deep thread on the pipe section so then I can just uh, make sure that it is bottoming out on the inside of here instead of the other way around. And then I can cut off, I can, I can shorten that once I know until the thread is just nicely disappearing inside here, but you're still getting a nice, good seating at the top. So uh, let's get to the lathe. Okay, I'm all set up, ready to thread. It turned out that uh, the current gears were 40 and 52, and I didn't want to change them, so I just decided to go with 26, because that seemed reasonable. Um, so I just had to switch some levers for that. Then over here, I have them all set up. I've already done a scratch pass, and it does look like it is giving me 26 studs per inch. So I think I'm good to go. happy with that. Threads are pretty clean. They feel good. I had to touch up the lead and the lead out a little bit with the needle file, but uh, I think it'll work really well. On to the cap. Okay, slight change of plan. I realize there's enough meat here, so I'm not going to worry about wasting all this brass by turning it down. I'm just going to do all the operations here, part this off, flip it around, and then I can just clean up this, and that'll be enough. So anyway, next step, drill this out to under quarter inch and then ream it. Uh, I thought I had a quarter inch plus 0.251 uh, reamer, but I couldn't find it. I do have like half a dozen quarter inch ones though. Don't know why. Uh, so we'll see how that works. And if I have to drill it out to make the drill rod fit, that's fine. This doesn't actually have to be that precision. Then I'm gonna drill out a bunch of the, the meat on the inside and then bore it out to the final size, which I'm thinking half inch deep and a 0.94 diameter on the inside. And then next threading operation. <laughs> Well, blast. Just reamed that out, pulled the ream out, and there was a surprising lack of chips, which seems suspicious. So I looked at the drill, which was in the D slot in my, my alphabetized drill set, and it's quarter inch. Somehow that got misfiled. Uh, wow, that was really dumb of me. Again, it should be fine. Uh, see how that looks. Yeah, in fact, it doesn't even want to go. So yeah, I'll have to drill that out a step above. No real harm done, but still, that's just dumb. It's disappointing. Okay, I didn't like how the, the 7 eighths drill bit was wandering in there. Um, it's a bit banged up, but it actually feels okay. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm just going to uh, bore this out. It's not that actually that much harder.
here's where we are after the boring operation goes down slightly over half an inch uh, and definitely enough wall thickness to cut the thread into so I'm going to set up so next I need to cut the relief back there then I can thread here's the tool I'm going to use to get the relief cut in there I think I made this oof, eight years ago when I made my Turner's cube just after getting the lathe it's come in handy ever since okay I've got in there at the depth I want the carriage is locked down and I zeroed out the y-axis uh, when it was out here and I could see how thick into the wall it was going so I know I can't overshoot that way and uh, let's try this <laughs> doesn't want to bite. Let's try a little bit higher. That looks better. Look at those chips. That's what I want to be seeing. a lot better. There we go. Clearance all the way to full thread depth. All set up to do the internal threading. I've already done a scratch pass and it looks good. Um, so the way I'm set up is I've zeroed out the DRO on the, the x-axis um, comfortably inside the relief cut on the inside. And then I practiced a few times um, with, with this out in the middle where it would just go into the hole if I missed. So I could learn if I was actually able to do this. And yeah, I'm able to reliably stop it within 10 thou of that zero mark. And that's plenty of, of margin. So now it's just gonna be like a normal 13 operation except um, between steps, I. You know, I'll bring it back out, I'll re-zero, I'll set, I'll bring the carriage, the, uh, the transverse, back to zero on the y-axis. And then, on the compound, instead of dialing it in, I'll be dialing it out to pull the cutting tool back towards me, and that'll progressively make the threads. So, let's see if it works. Oh, blast. I just realized I didn't actually hit record. So you missed all of the internal threading. Uh, it took quite a few passes. I was trying to sneak up on it and still not quite as tight as I would like, but it's fine. Um, so now I just need to part this off. go. Uh, came out pretty well. Uh, after off camera I rounded over these edges which I'd been thinking of doing anyway but also this rolled off the bench and put a big ding right in the edge and so I decided oh I guess I'm trying that after after all. I'm trying to get a bit better about finishes. I took this up to a thousand grit but uh, probably should have started a bit lower. And spend a bit more time on it but I think for what I'm doing here it's 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 quite nice I did uh, shorten this some so now when it threads on it bottoms out nicely and really cleanly just like that and the uh, here's the drill rod that will go in it bit bit looser fit than I would like but uh, once I get the piston on the inside holding it parallel, I think it'll be just fine. I mean, you know, it's a pneumatic slide whistle. How good does it actually have to be? But uh, yeah, so next thing will be, yeah, making that piston, I think.
the slide mechanism here is pretty much complete. You can just set it up to there. Slide the piston into the pipe. And screw this down. There. So I'm actually kind of glad now that this isn't such a tight fit as it could have been because I can feel the air being pushed out of there because of course this is a pretty airtight seal down here now. I still might drill some vent holes there though. We'll see. It doesn't, I'm not feeling a huge amount of back pressure so it's probably okay. So this part is all done. Uh, now as soon as that die shows up I can get back to prototyping the uh, what the aperture should be like for this but uh, I think this is good enough for this week. Just to demo what I have, it's set up here on in the vise on the mill. You can move the slider in and out easily. And I've set up a air gun, a blower gun um, in the mill stop, which actually works surprisingly well. So I just put this camera down. First of all, it doesn't happen on this other side, even if I plug up the bottom. Oh. Or it does, never mind. <laughs>